Hello, this is my 19 week bump date. Currently I'm 19 weeks and five days, still due March 5th, 2022. I didn't do a bump date last week because it was a pretty rough week just mentally for me and I couldn't bring myself to make a video about it. So this is gonna encompass 19 weeks, but 18 weeks was basically the same, nothing new's changed. So this will cover both kind of. At 19 weeks, baby is the size of a pancake, which like, what kind of pancake? A guinea pig or a mango all varies a lot, I don't know. Baby weighs 10.58 uh, ounces and is 10.08 inches long. It told me this week that it usually measures from the baby's head to the butt and now it's measuring from the head to the feet. So much longer measurement. We also had our anatomy scan today so I have exact measurements of the baby to come. Weight gain, I did go to the doctor today. My doctor said that I gained one pound in the last six weeks since I had my last doctor's appointment. So yay, one pound. <laughs> Must have item this week. I'm gonna make it a cheesy one and say that it's a support system because I have been really anxious and having lots of like struggles with freaking myself out. So having that support system and people to talk to me and talk me down from all of the fears has been very helpful. So I can't really link that below, but I highly recommend it, even if it is online, like I like to do. Let's get into symptoms. Nausea is still there a little bit, but it's definitely improved. It's not as frequent, definitely not constantly. It's not as intense when I do have it. So it's improving, but it still is there. I'm still taking two nausea medications, alternating throughout the day. If I don't take them, I do notice a difference. So still a thing. Also still having the food aversions. Not a lot of food sounds good. I'm not having any cravings. Most of the time I just like eat because I know I have to eat. It's not because I actually want something or I'm craving something. So hoping that comes soon. Uh, my hips kind of hurt, especially at night when I'm laying down. My job is very active and I get like 15,000 steps on average. And the days that I work, when I lay down in bed at night, my hips hurt a lot. Like it's like they cramp up, like I get a Charlie horse or something when I try to move them or like reposition myself in bed. So that's been pretty painful. Sometimes when I cough, I feel like I'm gonna like throw up, which I think is an acid reflux kind of thing, that it's like right here and acid and whatever. So that's been a weird symptom. <laughs> Um, my stomach feels very hard. Like when I push on it, it feels like I'm like flexing my abs, but I'm not. So it just feels like very firm all throughout my stomach, which is interesting. Um, definitely peeing more in the middle of the night. I pee like before my shower, then I pee after my shower, then I get into bed. And then usually before I fall asleep, like an hour or two later, I pee again. And then I usually wake up around like 1 a.m. and have to pee. And then I wake up around like 5.30 or 6.30 some days and have to pee again. So definitely more peeing happening. Definitely still anxious. Uh, that's been like very heightened the last two weeks since I had my last appointment because there are a lot of unknowns. I still have some unknowns, but kind of helped today to answer some of them on our anatomy skin. Cravings and aversions. I'm still not having any cravings. I, I still am not like, oh my gosh, I really need to have this. I gotta eat it right now. I don't feel that way about anything. Um, sometimes like something will sound good. Like I'll be like, oh, I'd rather have this cheeseburger over this pizza, but I'm not like, oh my God, a cheeseburger, I have to eat it right now. Like I, I'm not craving anything specifically. Aversions still having those. I don't think they're as strong as they were in the beginning when like nothing sounded good, but I still have a lot of food that I'm like, no, I don't want to eat that. I packed myself almonds one day for work because I'm trying to have like healthier options. And I like got, had a few, like a handful of the almonds and I was like, I can't eat these. I don't want this. <laughs> what I miss, I'm going to say not feeling anxious all the time. I'm trying to keep an eye on it and trying to make sure that it's not like a uh, perinatal, I think is what it's called. Like postpartum people can get anxiety, but you can also get anxiety during pregnancy that can be heightened by hormones and by all kinds of changes in your body. So I'm trying to keep an eye on it and make sure it's not something like that, that I need to talk to my doctor about. Um, now that I've had the anatomy scan, I'm hoping that the anxiety calms down a little bit, but I've definitely been very anxious the past week or two. Um, definitely worrying about baby, worrying about all of my symptoms, worrying about if I like am okay, if baby's okay. So that's been a challenge. Which leads me into challenges this week. Definitely the anatomy scan or like waiting for the anatomy scan. So it's been a long wait. I feel like my bump is not very big. I feel like it's gotten smaller somehow. Uh, I haven't felt baby move at all, I don't think. I'm not having any cravings. I'm not really having a ton of symptoms in general. I don't really feel like super pregnant, like some people are saying. So I, it worries me. 
I have a Doppler, I have a hard time finding the baby on there, so I tend not to use it very often because it just frustrates me that I can't find it. So it just worries me. I can't check in on the baby. There's nothing I can do to make sure he's okay. I just have to hope that if I'm not bleeding or cramping that everything's okay in there and that stresses me out a lot. So waiting for this anatomy scan today was very stressful. Highlight of the week was probably my anatomy scan today. While it was very stressful, it also was reassuring because I got to see the baby, he's moving, he's growing, there's good things happening. So that was reassuring. In terms of the anatomy scan, he checks out great. All of his organs measured good. There's no issues with anything in like him or his body. So that's fantastic. He weighed 11 ounces, which is super cute. They didn't say like what percentile that was or if that like where it fell on the range of babies. They just said it was normal and that that was good and expected. So I guess that's a good thing. I don't know if you can hear my dog barking downstairs, but she's going crazy. Um, they did find some things uh, about me. They did say that I have an anterior placenta, which means I think that my placenta is in front of the baby. So like there's a barrier for the baby and like my stomach, like the outside of it. So when he's kicking, he's kicking into my placenta instead of into like my stomach. So that's why I probably can't feel his kicks yet because he's kicking my placenta, which looked nice and cushiony and it's just cushioning all of his movements. So I should be able to feel the baby once he gets bigger because he'll be a larger baby and have larger movements that'll be able to feel it through the placenta. But there is a chance that I won't feel as many movements as some people who don't have an anterior placenta. I also said I have marginal placenta previa that I think, I haven't researched this yet, but what I think it is, is that it your placenta covers part, that's why it's marginal, of my cervix. Um, if it's fully placental previa, that it covers all of the cervix. And then if it, mine's just marginal, so it covers part of it, which could be an issue for delivery because then you can't deliver like vaginally, you would have to have a C-section and I think you deliver earlier. I don't know if anybody has uh, history or knows about placental previa, please let me know because I have not researched it yet. So I don't really know much about it, but they said usually that resolves itself and will go away on its own. I go back in like two months, I think around like 30 weeks to do another ultrasound and they'll check it again. They'll see if it's moved because sometimes it can move up and can kind of clear itself. Um, and sometimes it stays and you have to have a C-section, which would not be the end of the world of all the things that could be wrong that one doesn't seem like a huge deal, I'm hoping. So those are my updates of the anatomy scan. Looking forward to, I'm going to say, scheduling some more private ultrasounds. I really want to do more of the 3D ones where I can check in on baby and not have to wait so long before appointments to see him since I worry about him and everything that's going on. If you get private ultrasounds or have gotten them, how often do you get them? Like what's the normal range? Because I'd go every week if I could, but I feel like that's not recommended. <laughs> I'm about to run out of space on my phone because I have like almost 50,000 photos on my phone. I know it's a problem. I'm gonna try to do my bump date before we run out of storage. All right, here we go, 19 weeks from the front. This is with my shirt down, but a maternity shirt. Other side, do with the tank top, front. And other side. And just with my stomach, there's the front, front side, this is the front. <laughs> and other side, all right. That is my 19 week bump date. Thank you for watching. I will try to put some anatomy scan pictures either when I was talking about the anatomy scan or here at the end. Thank you for watching and I'll see y'all next week. Goodbye.